Hi everyone, how are you doing? You're starting a new series for economic review and it is called Technology for Economic Empowerment. Technology is almost everywhere around us nowadays. Um, we're using it here to record the video, we're using it to record the voice, uh, we're using it to communicate using a cell phone, we're using it in the cars, we're using it in form of electricity. So almost everything around us um, has a link to technology itself. So it's, it's a very wide um, uh, topic. So we will discuss um, more technological in terms of websites, in terms of um, internet, um, and furthermore, depending on what you as a viewer and a reader have preferred for us to tell you. So today we will discuss more on the internet side and more on the internet side, basically social media and how we can use social media for economic activity and empowerment of your company and yourself and your nation and your world. Today in an interconnected world, um, internet allows us to be as equal and as powerful to anyone anywhere around the globe. So a person sitting in New York or a person sitting in Karachi or a person sitting in Delhi or a person sitting in Dubai is almost empowered in the same manner because of internet in the same way as another person. It's up to us how we use the technology, it's up to us how much we use the technology, and it's up to us how we manage to use our technology for our digital empowerment and our economic empowerment. So a person gets up in New York, he, he, he gets up in New York, he opens his Android phone or he opens his iPhone and he checks the weather, he checks um, where, which road to take, how to drive to work and when what to do today and all that scheduling that is normally how a person is in New York is organizing himself by using a iPhone or an Android phone to empower himself uh, using the social networks out there uh, to connect himself to whereas a person living in Karachi might not be doing that how because he is not uh, taking advantage of those tools available. So if the person in Pakistan starts to use and starts to integrate him, his own life using the same tools, he would be as empowered as the other person living on the other side of the world. And his productivity level will go up, thus his work will go up, thus his um, salary or his in, an income or his economic value which he's putting it back in the country would go up. Uh, social networks um, that includes um, Facebook, that includes YouTube, that includes any content which has been produced socially by the people. How, and that means that almost everything today we use is part of social network. Be Huffington Post which, which um, publishes the latest news or be it Facebook, or be it YouTube, or be it Maps, uh, be it anything is nowadays connected to social network. And those social networks allow us, empower us to do more uh, by doing less. And as uh, we were in the agriculture age, then we went into the industrial age, then we went into the knowledge age, now we're in the intelligence age. So we have to use our time intelligently not just be bombarded with the knowledge which is around us. We have to use our time intelligently on how to use our time and when to use our time and what to do when. Uh, a lot of people tell me that you know by they don't use Facebook or they think that Facebook kills a lot of time of theirs. So today we will just talk about how we can use Facebook. I mean I understand that the social networks itself comprises a lot of things, but Facebook is a combination of um, multimedia including text, video and pictures. So we'll discuss today more on Facebook than of anything else. Facebook was created in 2004 and today in 2013 it has a billion users. It has been growing at the rate of 8 to 20 percent depending on the country and it has grown immensely. And I personally think that in the next three to four years, it'll have another billion users on Facebook. 
Um, so we are talking about the world's largest economy and world's largest network, uh, which is a combination of all our brains interconnected, now available, accessible to us uh, to empower ourselves for almost anything. So how do we use it and how do we use it so that it doesn't kill a lot of our time? Now, a lot of you might be reading newspapers, a lot of you might be reading books, um, or a lot of people might be watching um, news channels almost every day to update yourself. I personally, however, do not use, neither do I use, watch news, neither do I read newspapers. My news normally comes from Facebook. How does that happen? So I'm in communication business and initially I was networking with people who were in communication business. So anything related to communication, I was actually getting news before anybody else, even the CNN were getting through social networks because those people who are uh, connected to that news are actually there. So I was following them or I was adding them as a friend or I liked their page. So my news was coming in from TechCrunch. So I've liked the TechCrunch page and I'm also friends with a lot of people who are editor for TechCrunch. So before the news become news, you get to know that news. And as you know, that because of the speed of the news, you can actually make a lot of money based on that news also. You're also now connected directly uh, to that point of news generation rather than somebody else telling you what happened and how did it happen. So if you are in any business, almost any business, you can now empower yourself by adding people on Facebook, by adding pages of the businesses which are related to you. So if you are a lawyer, you can get connected to multiple lawyers from around the world. If you are a business person who is in energy sector, you can add people who are CEOs, CFOs, marketing guys, researchers related to energy. You can also add people who are in universities um, researching on that subject of energy, for example. If you are an economist, which you might most likely be because you're reading this news, you might want to be connected to all the other economists in the world. And by learning from peers, your learning would be faster because you would be hearing and learning about those news before it actually becomes news. So it's already happening around you. Uh, that is the most um, phenomenal way of uh, getting news. So once you're connected to them and you open your Facebook on your home section you will see the news coming in from those people directly in your inbox and it will allow you to get the news before anybody else. Now how do you manage your time around Facebook? So you can make a you can make a rule similarly that you have a rule for the uh, for the newspaper. Now, most of the people read the newspaper in the morning for 10 minutes, just go through the headlines, and then when either they come to office or in the evening, they go through the whole news together, or you know, you, they, they, they go through that news. Um, similarly, you can, you, know, you can take your iPhone, or you can take your Android phone, or you can take your iPad, or you can use your PC to go through, browse through the news, just through, scroll it up, and just see what's happening and what are the highlights of the day and, and see what is happening. Uh, that's what I normally would do. And then I time myself. So I, when I sit in front of the computer, I would say, I'm not going to sit here for more than 30 minutes. And I time myself. So I, when I time myself and, and if I'm busy, I close the chat section and I never chat with anyone on Facebook and I keep myself timed within that time so I can answer all the inboxes, all the news, all the updates, all the tagging, and I can take care of all that work. And uh, if you are in a business like myself, which is in technology, you might want to spare more than 30 minutes for yourself for spending time on Facebook. For me, it's a learning tool, it's an education tool, it's a teaching tool, it's an entertainment tool, and it's the connecting tool is the way to network. Uh, in business, normally, when you meet someone, it's more than unlikely that you will meet that person over and over almost every day or almost every week or almost every month even. However, if you are connected on Facebook, it's more chances that you will meet that person um, on Facebook or you will see that person's face more often than you will see that in the real life. Because our daily life 
um, has become very complicated and we don't get enough time to see that person in person. So Facebook allows us to be visible to the, in front of that person and they know what we do and when they need the, our services they will give us a call or they will send us a message or something. What are the good tips for using Facebook to make yourself visible? Now if you want to make yourself visible um, and you don't want to make yourself over visible you might want to put up a status at least once a week or at least once a day uh, depending on your own self um, so that people might have a chance of seeing or listening something from you. If you don't type anything on Facebook, then people would not see you. You're not. You're like uh, watching television. But here, it's a it's a dialogue. It's not a monologue. So you can actually tell the other person what you think by keep putting up a status or depending on the economic situation or the political situation or your personal situation if you want to share that. And you can share pictures because pictures, one picture is equal to a thousand words. So you can share something which is public information already and you can share that. And whatever you share on Facebook you have to be careful because anything you put on Facebook is already public. Anything now digital you put out there is public information anyways. So um, be careful what you share and it, anything which is public you should not be scared of that. You can, you can share that easily. Anything which is related to business which is public already you can share that. Uh, if you're a publicly trading company or if you're a publicly traded company you might want to be careful on what kind of information you share because the SECP rules might require you not to share that some information. So you have to be careful on what kind of information you share on Facebook. But remember anything you share on Facebook is public. Anything you share on Facebook is public. That is so important I'm going to say it one more time. Anything you share on Facebook is public. I hope you enjoyed today's segment. It's a little dry. I tried to do my best, but let me know what you think of it and how we can improve it even further. And send me the next topic which you want in the next month's magazine. You can contact me on fb.com slash Rihanna Lawala. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.